Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his namesake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I will fear no danger. You are, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have any of you ever been in a situation where you've needed a guide? A guide can be something as simple as someone at Woolworths pointing you to which aisle the coffee is in, or could be as complex as someone helping you navigate through a dangerous stretch of bushland. There are plenty of times in our life when we need a guide, but most of those guides are fairly specific. The person who guides you at Woolworths cannot guide you through the pillaga. The person who guides you through the pillaga may not be able to help you if you get lost in town. And so often we get stuck asking, who can guide us through life? Is there one guide who can help us navigate all the ups and downs of life? Well, this is where Psalm 23 comes in, and Psalm 23 gives us David's answer to that question. Psalm 23 pops up everywhere. It's probably one of the most well-known pieces of the Bible ever. I did some research to see where it pops up in everyday life. Apparently it's been sung by the likes of Bach, U2, Pink Floyd and Kanye West. Musicians from across the years, across the musical genres, have all used this psalm. So well known it is. But when was the last time that you actually got to read it? And I don't mean a speed read during the commercials of your latest TV show, but actually stopped, read, and reflected on this great psalm. Well, here today, God has given us the ability to do just that. So as we come to reflect on Psalm 23, please pray with me that God will open our eyes to what he has to say. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Psalm 23. We thank you for the beauty of its words and pray that you'll help us to hear what you have to say to us this morning. Amen. Psalm 23 starts in a meadow. David is there, sitting on the green grass. A cool stream flows by. There's a nice breeze on the wind, and the sun is shining. David looks around, and he asks himself, How did I get here? How did I find such a peaceful spot? His answer to that question God brought him here. His shepherd led him to this place of rest. God picked David, who was tending his family's sheep in the wilderness, and brought him to be the king of Israel. And now God is allowing David a moment of peace and rest. And he remembers he didn't deserve it. He didn't find this meadow all by himself. God brought him here. And if you have a look in verse 3, you'll see exactly why. For his namesake. God brings David to the meadow so that in his moment of rest and peace, David will say, look how good God is. Look where God has brought me to. Now, we don't have any recorded instances of Jesus singing this psalm, but it does neatly encapsulate his whole life. 
There were plenty of times in his life where God granted Jesus rest, recuperation. And then in our reading from John chapter 10 that we heard earlier, we see that Jesus then invites us to share in that rest. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Just like God led David to the meadow, Jesus can lead us to our periods of rest and peace in our life because he knows what we need. He's the one who made us and so he understands best how we need to rest. In our constant search for meaning, purpose, value and community, Jesus looks at us and says, Come to me. I can give you all those things. In our restless and tireless search to please God, Jesus says, Rest in me. I've done that for you. He brings us to the meadow, helps us find our rest, so that like David, we can turn to others and say, Look how good God is. Look at the place that he has brought me to in my life. Look at all the blessings he has given me. But suddenly, the scene changes. The ground is now hard and covered in stones. Steep cliff walls hide the light of the sun. Darkness surrounds, jagged rocks stick out at every angle. David is no longer in a meadow, but he's stuck in a valley. The darkest valley, or as many translations put it, the valley of the shadow of death. And yet David is still able to say that he fears no evil, because the one who took him to the meadow is with him in the valley. Did you notice that in the meadow, Jesus was God was he. He led me. He brings me. But suddenly, now in the valley, you are with me. God may have guided David to the meadow and let him rest, but as he walks through the valley, God is right there, walking next to him, holding his hand and taking him step by step. And it's important for us to see that God doesn't take David around the valley. He doesn't help David avoid trouble, but instead walks with him. Because the valley is just as much the right path that God is taking David on as the meadow was before. The valleys are just as important in us learning to know, love, and trust God as is our times of peace and rest. But how can God lead us through the dark valley? What does he know of the valley of the shadow of death? How can he be our guide during those times? Well, the fact is, he can be our guide in the valley of the shadow of death because he's been there before. Jesus, when he stepped out of heaven, joined us in the dirt and muck of life. He didn't live a privileged life, but experienced suffering in all its forms. He was betrayed by his closest friends. He was abandoned at his moment of greatest need. He wept bitterly at the death of a close friend. He has experienced loss and suffering. And ultimately, he died. And then, on the third day after his death, he arose triumphant. In his resurrection, he comes out the other side of the valley of shadow of death. And so now he says, I've been there. I know the way. I can show you the way through. If you've ever been on holidays back when we were allowed to travel, 
maybe you took a tour. And the best tours are always done by guides who know the local area, the guides who have walked the paths a hundred times before. Why are they the best tour guides? Because they can tell you all the secret spots. They know the route like the back of their hand. They can take you to the hidden gems, tell you all the interesting facts, show you the less trod paths. I mean, the new guide, he can read a map, he can read some interesting facts from Wikipedia, and that's all well and good. But he doesn't really know the way. Our good shepherd is a fantastic tour guide because he knows the way. He's been there before. And so when he says, I can lead you through the valley of the shadow of death, it's because he knows its steep corners. He knows the perilous rocks. He knows every twist and turn. And so he is fully capable of guiding us through the valley. In John 10, again, in verses 11 and 12, he puts it like this. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. Unlike the hired hand, Jesus doesn't run at the sight of our suffering and the valley of the shadow of death. He takes our hand and walks us through it. Everything else that we put our trust in is just a hired hand. Our power, status, money, relationships, self-help gurus, all of these things are good and can be a great blessing from God. But if we trust them too much, we will find that they are just hired hands. At best, they will get us lost in the valley. At worst, they will abandon us in the middle of it. It is only Jesus, our good shepherd, who knows the way, who can truly guide us through all the ups and downs of life and take us through the valley. So if at the moment you're feeling like you're stuck in the valley, you're at one of the low points in your life, hear that this psalm says that God has not abandoned you. It may feel like it, but he has not left you. He is right next to you. He understands what you're going through because he's felt it too. And if you let him, he will take you out the other side of the valley, trusting him more and more equipped to do the works that he has prepared for you to do. And then we're left asking the question, Jesus guides us to the meadow, he takes us through the valley, but where is he taking us to? Where does he want us to end up? Well, he takes us to a feast. Jesus is no longer the shepherd or the guide, he is now a gracious host preparing a table before us. And not just any type of feast. It's a victory feast. The defeated enemy watches on as we enjoy the favour and blessing of a grand feast. But this is not a victory that we, are, we have won by our might or by our power, but a victory that has been won for us. I think Jesus would have used this psalm to comfort him as he walked up the road to the cross because he could see that on the other side of the valley a great victory feast awaited. And we saw that at the resurrection. The victory has been won, not by us, but by him. And now he delights to invite us as his children to join him in the great victory feast that is coming. David trusted God to guide him through all the ups and downs of life. God took him from the pasture and put him in the palace. God granted him rest to face the trials that he would endure. 
God walked with him by his side and brought him to the great victory feast. But King David's greater son has arrived. The one who is the good shepherd, who can guide his people to the meadow and grant them rest because he made them. He knows what we need and can grant us true rest. He can walk us through the valley because he's walked the path himself. He knows the way. And ultimately, he will bring us to the great victory feast where we will live with him in the new creation forever. Not because we won the victory, not because we deserve it, but because he won the victory for us and because he loves us and wants us to join with him at his table. In the meadow, in the valley, and at the table in the house of the Lord. Jesus is there to be our guide through all circumstances of life. He knows when we desperately need rest and invites us to rest in him because he has done everything we need to find peace with God. And so if you are in a, in a meadow right now, when you are experiencing God's blessing, remember to say, God brought me here. Look how good God is. You didn't earn your place in the meadow. You didn't find it yourself by your own hard work. God showed it to you, and he took you there. We need not fear any evil when we walk through the valley because we know that Jesus has walked the path before and he is right there with us, protecting us and reminding us that our biggest problem has been dealt with and he will bring us safely to the Father to live with him forever. And then on the other side of the valley, a great victory feast awaits. He points us forward and says, a new world is coming where there is no longer any tears or crying or pain, one where sin has been defeated and all of God's people will live with him forever in the new world. Jesus can be our guide through all of life. He knows what we're going through. He understands our pain and is pointing us to a new and better place where we will join with him in the great victory feast that he has won for us. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and pray that you will help us to trust you, help us to let you guide us through all situations in life. And we thank you that in your son you understand what we are going through. Thank you for all the good things that you have given us. Amen.